morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is Joyce, Joyce All Knowing Tarot. How are you guys? It is Saturday morning. I usually don't work on a Saturday morning, but I miss you guys. I thought, well, let's get up here and do a couple of things today. Um, first of all, thank you so much for watching our vacation video. We had a blast, absolutely had a terrific time. And um, yeah, uh, we had planned it in January or February and we had made a whole agenda out and we're able to do most everything that we wanted to do. So that is the good part. Um, got a couple of things coming up. I've got an interview. I'm going to be interviewed. Uh, I think it's called um, the channel. I believe it's called Heart and Soul Connection. That's what it's called by a lady named Allie. And that'll be July 7th. And then July 9th. Is it July 9th or July 12th? I'm not sure. I'll let you guys know. Linda will be uh, back on and we will do something with her. I'm not sure if we'll do it on my side or her side. Oh, no. She wants to do it on this side. That's what it is. Because she felt really bad uh, from the day that she was working with me. And um, and she felt like, oh, I didn't give my best or I was rushed. And I told her that she was fine. We are a loving group over here. We are not going to hold her for for things that were kind of out of her control but she wants to come back and make it up so we'll do that in uh uh i guess another week or so so that'll be fun i love having her on she's a lot of fun um class starts july 11th if you are interested please send a yes in the comment and we'll send you the information and then i'm opening up personal readings again so if you're interested in getting a personal reading you want to know in what way you can make some difference and changes in your life and what's the best direction for you to go, send me an email. It'll be in the description box and um, we can get you scheduled for a reading. So today I want to look at a few things. I just wrote them down. So the first thing from my understanding, I think I talked about this once already too, but the Manhattan District Attorney has informed the Trump Organization that um, <clears throat> excuse me, as early as next week, they could be um, pressing or bringing criminal charges to that organization. Listen, if they pose criminal charges on that organization, that will mean that whatever banks that Trump work with is going to have to, uh, they're going to freeze everything. They're going to stop with the money dealings with him and they're going to call in loans that he owes, which is a tremendous amount. It's more than what he has. I can guarantee you that. So let's take a look and see is the I am using, by the way, my uh, urban tarot. It's a Toth uh, Crowley deck is what it actually is. So I want to take a look and see will. Manhattan begin criminal charges against the Trump organization. And <sighs> let's take a look. <laughs> well, I'm telling you right now, we got the Knight of Discs. Knight of Discs says that they have, this is someone who is very thorough. So this is would be indicative of the Manhattan District Attorney. This would be indicative of somebody who dots their I's and crosses their T's. T's. They move slowly but effectively, okay? They don't just rush out. They don't make a move until they have all the evidence that they need, whether it's on Trump or anybody else. So they are definitely, as you can see, this is a chef in this picture, but he, they are working on it. They're working on it. They're very thorough. They want to make sure that they've got everything covered. They don't want to bring a case where uh, Trump's people can wiggle worm out of it. They've got all the documentation that they need. And they, are they coming next week? Yes, ma'am. That is swiftness. Or that's like the eight of wands means that they are coming very fast. 
They've got all the evidence that they want. They've taken their time all the while where we were sort of looking the other way at other things. When Trump was in office, they were working on this case for the Trump organization in New York. And so, yes, they are coming very quickly. And we've got the two of wands in reverse or the dominion. And that is the dominion of Trump is going to come tumbling down. So they are definitely coming to Trump. They are going to make the magic happen. We got the magician card. They've got everything it takes. Okay. They've got all the information they need. They don't really even need anything else. Um, yeah, they are ready to rock and roll with this. And ultimately, it's the same thing I keep getting with Trump. I've gotten this before that ultimately he gets the 10 of swords or the oppression card. This is someone who is found guilty of criminal matters, criminal, financial, uh, tax fraud, bank frauds. So, yeah, they're definitely coming for him. Um, they're coming fast. They don't have to mess around anymore. They've done all the the back work while he was, you know, playing the games and getting people riled up in their feelings or be feeling divisive all the while they were getting this case together on him. So that's going to be interesting to watch. I hope that's on something on television or the news. You know, the media will talk about it anyways. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Another lawsuit coming up. It's the Biden campaign workers. If you remember when they were in Texas and they were in that the campaign bus, you know, the, the um, like a Greyhound bus, you know, they were in that bus. And then you had the Texas people that were they were on the road trying to run them off the road and eventually got them off the freeway. Well, now they are suing those Texas individuals. Um, they called it the Trump train. If you remember they were on the freeway and that Trump train with the flags and the whole thing were basically trying to run Biden up out of Texas. So they're going to attempt to sue them. So let me see how that's what's what's going to happen with that. The Trump. Will they be successful in their legal matters against some of these drivers of these vehicles? Will the Biden campaign workers be successful at suing the Trump train people? And one more. <clears throat> There's a lot of legal matters going on. It's so interesting that we sit up here to this day and the legislative branch, Republicans, allow Trump to get off on all of his a mess. And yet here we are, uh, here people are suing, 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 because everybody knew that he was uh, wrong. Everybody knew he was a liar. And so in as far as these Trump trained people, they're like hackers, okay? They're like hackers. That is the Prince of Swords. And so they came out on this Biden bus very aggressive, very fast, uh, wanted to hurt or harm or whatever it took to get Biden out of the state. <laughs> and he had a right to be there and campaign. But here they came trying to run interference. That's what hackers do. Try to run interference so that he couldn't be successful in campaigning in Texas. We've got the temperance card. Temperance is in reverse. Says time is up for you guys. Time is up. There are going to be legal processes coming down. Time is up for your BS. That's got to come to an end. Whether you believe Trump is still the president. Some people actually, you know, I've heard really believe that he is still the president or whatever your deal is. But this mess that you did, you're not going to get away from it. You're not going to. Not at all. Um, there's no really. And, and quite frankly, as I look at them as the hackers and the temperance card in reverse, there's no real reason or there's no way for them to escape what they've done. They've done what they've done. And so this means that the Biden uh, campaign workers are going to have to be very strong and speak their truth on whether they felt fear 
um, anxiety. I'm sure they felt all of that at the time. And they're going to have to come in and go at it and let them have it, quite frankly. And we've got the power card. So it looks like they will success be successful with the lawsuit. Um, and then we've got the defeat card, but it's in reverse. So it says that they will proceed with this lawsuit against these um, this Trump train. That is what they call it, not me. I don't call it anything, but um, they will be successful. They will not be defeated. They're going to be strong. It may take a little bit of time. They've got to hold on. They've got to be patient. OK, they've got to make sure that they don't come out in the media too much, saying too many things. And but they're going to be able to hold on to their truth and their position. And they're going to have this sense of regain of power that you don't have the right to hurt us in an effort to keep Trump in office. You know, that was utterly ridiculous. And that defeat card was in reverse means that they can expect a positive outcome. OK, so I had to stop and get some water. So that was good with the. um with the Biden campaign, they are going to sue these individuals. They don't have a leg. The The Trump train people, as usual, don't have a leg to stand on. Oh, my eyebrows are looking crazy. I wore a lot of makeup over the vacation, so I'm like, no, I'm keeping a clean face. Uh, the next thing is more lawsuits. The Department of Justice is looking to sue the state of Florida um, because of the... Um, the voting rights law, the voting rights, where they're going to try to suppress the black vote and really the vote of anyone who can't get out. They want to restrict the access to ballots. And <clears throat> I think they're going to be successful in that. That is what my intuition is telling me. I remember back, let's go back to, um, oh gosh, um, Okay, I had a brain blank out. Rodney King, remember Rodney King? All those um, police were uh, so-called acquitted and everything, and then the DOJ jumped in, and it was a whole other story. They had to do time, and they were flipping on each other and everything else. So when the DOJ comes in, when the feds come in, there's no, they don't play. Um, so let me see if the DOJ will be successful in suing the state of Georgia. That's kind of interesting. This is fascinating to me. I thought the the um, when Trump was president, that was crazy. But this is even crazier that his influence was so negative in such a powerful way that while he's off on some golf course, fool lying around or whatever, that there are people that are still doing things in the name of of Trump. <laughs> There's something very spiritual about that, but I won't get into that today. DLJ. Let's see. What's happening with you? Oh, yes. We've got the star card. As it comes to, will the DOJ um, sue the state over Georgia over uh, su suppressing uh, voting ballots? They got the star card. That is fantastic. That says that, yes, they will. And yes, there is a lot of hope. Keep your hopes up. Keep your faith up. Know that they're going to do their job. They're going to go above and beyond. They can see what is happening. OK, they can see that this is actually a very racist type of move. Um, it's something really for the wealthy. And so they definitely are going to, um, they're definitely going to sue. But also, if we take a look at it from the Georgia perspective, Georgia felt like they had the right to do that. They were very hopeful that we're going to get our, um, our state back. You know, the Republicans are going to get our state back and we're going to disenfranchise people. And yet, they end up with the three of swords that says there is a lot of pain and sorrow that there was there's three swords okay and so we have like um the third sword comes down the middle and that would be doj coming in and saying no we're breaking up all these shenanigans you're not going to be able to do this um what you're doing to people is cruel so is the doj coming for them absolutely uh, we've got the nine of swords. They're definitely, and in the Toth deck, that speaks of cruelty, that um, 
the DOJ is not going to hold any punches. They're not holding any back. They see you. They see what you're trying to do. They see that this is not going to work. This would take our country back hundreds of years or whatever. And or maybe not hundreds of years, but, you know, tens of tens of years. And we are not going to have it. We're not going to do it. You can put all that to rest. That's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me just take a quick look here. Yeah. So here comes, the, we have the Page of Cups. And that is reminiscent to me of here's the good news coming for you. Here is that we're going to do something that's going to make Georgia happy, the DOJ. We're going to do something that's going to make the people of Georgia happy. We're going to restore your happiness and your faith. And we're going to use our power and our uh, legal finesse and everything else to bring you happiness. And then there will be, in this case, this is two of pentacles. And in the top deck, it means change. There will be a change. And the change is going to be for the better of you. Um yeah, let me just throw a few more cards. Yeah, once again, they've got the the Georgia is really going to try to fight against it. So they're like the Knight of Swords. They're coming out being very cruel. So I see Georgia, the state of Georgia, doing things. Their their state, their local politicians being very cruel in the decisions they're doing. They're not concerned about if they're going to hurt people. They really believed that they had the right to do this, that they vote this in and we've got the right to do this. And the DOJ says, no, 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 no. We're not doing this. We're not doing this, okay? We're not taking this country back to a time where certain people could not vote or their vote didn't matter or let's disenfranchise people of color or anything like that. So you can, you're playing games, okay, with your constituents, Georgia. You're playing games in, in the hopes that the GOP can continue to be successful or go back to being a red state. But your games are not going to work because ultimately the wheel of fortune comes in the favor of the DOJ and it says that things are going to change. We've got two. We're going to take it right back. We're going to change things right back in the way that it's, there's equity for all people. So that's fantastic. The DOJ is going to come in. They're going to break that mess up. Of course, Georgia um, legal people are not going to be happy. Who cares? You can't disenfranchise people's vote just because you are in your feelings. And, hey, by the way, the um, – Michigan, which is where I am, do you know the Republicans got together and they actually debunked all the fraudulent, so-called fraudulent voting scams and everything else? They said it did not happen in this state, period. And that is the Republicans. They said it didn't it didn't happen here. We didn't fraudulently vote. There was no one finessing the the votes in the favor of the Democrats. They got really upset and they came together as a group in Demo of Republicans. And these are Republicans, by the way, and said, nope, we've looked at every aspect of it and there was no um, voter fraud in the state of uh, Michigan. So that's kind of interesting. Um, the last thing I want to look at is John McAfee. You remember John McAfee? He was the with the... Um, Virus protection, McAfee. Yeah. So evidently he was found dead. He was in a prison in uh, a Spanish prison, they say. Um, yeah. Let me see what happened to McAfee. I, I'm under assumption he committed suicide. Uh, <clears throat> my daughter told me that story. I didn't really look at it. But what happened with McAfee? Let's see. Okay. So I'm just, just turning up some random cards and he got the moon card. So this is a man that was in illusion. Okay. Of how much power he had. And, um, I think he did have a lot of money and all of that, but he was really under illusion as if, um, almost in a way where, uh, I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to say this anyways, uh, like schizophrenia or something where or paranoid, maybe that's even better, where he felt that people were coming for him. They, whoever that they was, was coming for him. And he was immersed in darkness, okay? He didn't start off that way at all, but he got to where he was by himself so much, uh, he felt like he was lost and trapped in darkness. So the same 
that he committed suicide. He did commit suicide. He didn't find any way. I couldn't find any way out of his situation. He wanted something more. Okay. He wanted something more. He was too lost in his uh, dream world, you know, like in the dark and whatever he'd done, I think that he killed someone actually. Um, I'm not sure you guys let me know, but anyways, he was so afraid about that coming to the light, which I don't even know why, but he couldn't take his situation anymore and he exited his own self out. So that part anyways um i think i will end right there i got a couple of more questions that i'll go over another time but i think i will stop right there listen if you like the channel please subscribe thumbs up leave a comment i will see you in the comment as i always do you guys have a wonderful saturday it's our saturday cleanup day so that part anyways guys love you guys so much bye now